Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 30. This one is a 6 millimeter vacuum infused carbon tooling plate, the kind you would use for composite tooling for curing prepreg parts. Here's a look at the sample and the laminate schedule. This is close to balanced, close to symmetrical. It's made with 800 gram triaxial with 200 gram woven face sheets. Why carbon for tooling? Mostly it comes down to the coefficient of thermal expansion. How much bigger things get when they get hot. And carbon has got a very low coefficient of thermal expansion compared to a lot of other tooling materials. So if you have a mold that heats up and gets bigger when you cure your parts like this, the part then cures larger because it's pulled out to fit the mold or distorted or however. Then when the tool cools down again, the part either pops out or it breaks or does something and that's bad. And vacuum infusion is a great way to build this composite tooling because it's a quick and easy way to do it. You can use low temperature masters or plugs, low void content. Here's a little mold infused and you can imagine if this got bigger or smaller during cure it would pre-release or have all kinds of trouble. Here's the laminate schedule for the plate and the woven face sheet is just a plain weave to give some stability to the surface. The meat of the whole thing is this 800 gram triax which happens to come in the roll I've got. It's been pre-slit and so I have a little roll of it that is about 200 millimeters wide. So I'm going to be making this up out of strips. Starting on this Teflon sheet. This would normally be done on a polished plug, something like that putting down the face sheet here with a little bit of spray adhesive, making sure there's nothing stuck underneath, no loose fibers. And this face sheet will just help prevent the heavier toes from printing through. So you can see on this, it is biaxial with a unidirectional. They're all stitched together. And when I put these down, they're gonna butt up edge to edge. I'm just gonna make sure as I go to stagger the butts so they're not all forming a big zipper down the middle of the part and when I put these down I'm going to put them down with the lighter biaxial that has the smaller toes facing the surface so there's less chance of it printing through and in order to make this symmetrical um, and as quasi isotropic as much fiber pointing equally in each direction as possible I'm just going to alternate 0 90 and you want to make sure tools are as stable as possible and having fiber at funny angles can cause distortion. Idea you could start with just 0 90 fiber orientation and that would be fine. You can add plus or minus 45 but you've got to make sure it's balanced as well as possible and that you don't have a, a bunch of extra fiber running in a funny direction um, or it can cause problems. So here I've got the staggered laps and I'm just sort of randomly slicing one so that I can place them with the joints at different spots each time. And as I've got to this middle ply, you can see I flipped over. So I'm putting the heavy unidirectional toes facing each other right in the middle. Uh, because I was trying to hit six millimeter instead of having a perfectly balanced laminate, there is one that's not symmetrical. Um, ideally, you could put a second in and you'd have a 6.8 millimeter panel. Um, that's a good rule of thumb with carbon tooling is that you can roughly estimate with infused or prepreg that about a thousand grams per millimeter of thickness and in this case it's quite close. It doesn't hold up for other processes as much where there's not good compaction. So I finished it off with the top woven sheet just giving it a quick trim because I was sloppy cutting my materials. Got to sharpen these scissors. And now that I've got this all laid up, I'm going to use a product called Compaflex, which is a combination peel ply and flow media. And it works really well. It releases really nicely. And the yellow on top allows for the resin to flow cleaned up around the perimeter. And I have my vacuum side manifold there. It's just spiral wrap covered in peel ply and I'm going to leave a nice generous vacuum break. Um, you note I've run the Compaflex all the way to the edge because it does not need a flow break the way mesh would. Um, this is Enca Fusion. 
This is going to be my inlet side plumbing. This is a product, a bunch of different companies make similar products. It is sort of like super flow mesh inside a stitch tube. And it works really well as a resin distribution medium. And this little puck is 3D printed just to accommodate the small hose I'm using, but you can buy these or make them. And this just lets the hose go through. You can see I've cut away under that ink fusion there where that um, puck goes just to help the resin flow through. You don't need to do it, but it's better. And here I'm putting the bag on. Uh, if you've seen any of these, you've seen me put many bags on. This one I put the sealant tape on the bag before I laid it up. You can see one problem there, these little folds. When you fold the bag up, you just have to be careful uh, not to let that thin sealant tape area uh, cause a leak. So that's one minor downside of that method. And so I pulled it down and I'm going to make sure everything is tidy. I've got good vacuum. I'm going to come along here, put some sealant tape around that puck and wrap some sealant tape around the end of the feed hose and spear that through. I want to make sure this is a great way to cause a leak. Um, make sure that is in there stable and you don't put too much load on the hoses. So to look at the resin for this, I just did a quick estimate based on the resin predicted from the spreadsheet and added a little extra for hoses and flow media. I'm going to start this thing off. You can see the Anka Fusion spreads that resin out and provides a, a nice distribution medium. I've got this sped up quite a bit. You see the clock in the background for the actual time. And the nice thing about this Compoflex with the flow media is that it doesn't let the resin run too far ahead. Um, so when you've got something like this, there's always sort of a wedge if you looked at it in cross section where on the surface the resin is ahead of where it is on the tool surface. Um, and so that wedge moves forward. You can see here the hot resin where it's warmed up, the cool resin coming in. Um, and as this moves forward, the resin has been in the part longer warms up from the warm table. The table here is about 100 F. You can see it's filling up on the edge closest to the camera. You can see it's lagging a little bit behind on the bottom. And um, that's the wedge right there um, where the flow front is leading. And you just want to make sure there's enough room for air to get out of that bottom edge. You can see a lot of the air flowing through uh, this Compoflex seems to work really nicely letting air continue to flow out of the part even after the resin front has passed. And so now that it's full, I'm going to clamp it off. I'm not going to raise the temperature, I'm just going to let it all come up. You can see that resin that went in first is really starting to heat up as it exotherms and uh, this whole panel will kick off pretty quickly. Demolding it, Everything seems to have gone all right. Trimming it up, and uh, this Compoflex really peels off nicely. Um, it is a coated peel ply, and you can see it pick up the Anka Fusion. If you're using um, regular flow media, the mesh, it can be difficult to get an uh, Anka Fusion strips off the part. So sometimes a Teflon coated peel ply or something underneath there will help panel seems to have come out nice. It's really shiny. You can see defects printed through from the Teflon surface. If that had been a shiny part, it would have been pretty good. So looking closely at this Compoflex, I've cut out a one square foot section measuring dry square foot section versus the wet out bit. It comes to about 763 grams per square meter of resin uptake. trimming up this panel. I made it big because I need a couple extra pieces for something else, but I cut the one square foot out. You can see it's very compact. 5.9 millimeters, which is just a tiny bit thinner than I predicted. 798 grams and 28.13 ounces. Having a look at it, you can see the peel ply side and the shiny side. It's relatively consistent thickness wise. The surface is really good. Uh, there's almost there's no visible porosity. 
um, and looking at it at the edge, you can't see any voids. It's super stiff. Like I can't really bend it at all. Um, that's one area where the little bit of water that I used to lubricate the cutting is still on it. It's very high pitched when you tap on it. It's like a bell. And that's carbon. Lots of carbon, not much resin. So it's a pretty good example of a relatively thin but pretty useful panel um, for tooling. Looking at the resin content, the fiber volume fraction, this ended up lower than I predicted. Um, and this is about the minimum amount of resin you'd want. And here's a very crude testing setup to compare the deflection of this panel against several others. Laminate sample number 10, e-glass, open molded, deflecting quite a bit. This bar, I don't know what it weighs, it's heavy. Laminate sample number four, carbon, similar thickness, deflecting much less. And this is number 25, almost exactly the same thickness. And the panel here that um, we just laid up deflects very, very little. This is not a great setup, but it gives an idea that when compared even to this piece of G10, which is actually quite a bit thicker, um, the deflection is still pretty good. So, so thickness is important, but the carbon brings that very low CTE that makes this a stable tooling material across a range of temperatures. And of course, one place this video does not go is to resin selection and post curing and making sure that your resin system can handle the temperature that you need to cure your parts. So thanks for checking it out. Have a look at the Explore Composites website for more information. See you on the next one.